Lights, camera, action. Is this thing on? We live? All right, we're good. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hugo, signs of the pastime. All right, it's been a while. I'm a little rusty. Haven't been making videos, but I'm back. Thankfully, everything's okay down here. It's just a little dark in the baseball card office right now in my card cubicle. That's because I'm still boarded up here at home. There were rumors that there was another hurricane coming after Milton. So I decided to just leave the boards up just in case. But uh, it may be lazy on my side, but maybe I'm just ahead of the game here. I don't know. Hopefully we won't have any more storms. We're still in hurricane season, but with Florida, you never know. So I got a couple of stories to tell you. It's been a little while. Uh, give you a little update, what's been going on. Uh, a little bit of a mail day. But before I do that, I just want to say thank you to all the friends here in the community that reached out and made sure that my family and I were okay before and after the storm. Uh, I really appreciate you guys and it really means a lot to me that you took the time to make sure that we were okay. I'm looking forward to getting back into a routine, making videos again, watching y'all's videos. Now this one here today, I'm just going to tell you a couple of stories. We're going to celebrate a birthday, a couple of birthdays actually, and a couple of anniversaries. One from a long time ago, and one seems like it was yesterday, but it was 20 years ago. So let's get into it, guys. I'm going to begin right here at the Polo Grounds, the historic ballpark that was in Upper Manhattan, and it was the home of the New York Giants until 1957, and then the New York Mets in 62 and 63. Also known as the Horseshoe or the Bathtub because of its wild dimensions, and the most historic hit landed right there. And it was the home run by Bobby Thompson in 1951 to win the Giants the pennant, also known as the shot around the world. The historic home run off of Ralph Branca. Check out my friend's video, Clean Cheap Shots, Drew, where he's standing right at that location where home plate used to be, the Polo Grounds. It's an awesome video about that historic moment. But in this video, I wanna talk about the most famous defensive play that happened right there in center field in game one of the 1954 World Series. We all know it as the catch. Now that play by Willie Mays in center field is to this day considered by many the greatest catch ever made. And that happened on September 29th, 1954. And on September 29th of this year, I wanted to go ahead and get that Baseball Thrills card out of the 1959 top set, uh, just to commemorate the 70 year anniversary of that catch. So I went on eBay and purchased the card. Now, I bought it September 29th. As you can see, it was shipped out September 30th. Now this thing went for a ride. Thankfully it's in good condition because the previous package that I received in the mail came like this. Got, came in one of these USPS bags and the card didn't fare so well. It was one of these Allen and Ginter cards. Now I was able to salvage the autograph, but the package got beat up. So I was expecting the worst for this. And it didn't start tracking for almost a week. So I thought this was just gonna be lost in the mail. And then the hurricane came and this thing went for a ride. And it finally got to me last night, October 15th. <laughs> so it took, what is it, 17 days or so? 16, 17 days. But finally got this in the mail and I arrived home safe and sound. I finally have the Baseball Thrills Willies, the catch. Been wanting this card for a long time and it was just, it was time. The 70 year anniversary of that play. And I'm glad I made it home safe. So now we have the greatest hit and the greatest catch that ever happened at the Polo Grounds. Now some fun facts about that World Series. In game one, Jim Barbieri threw out the first pitch as a little leaguer, because the team from New York had made it to Williamsport, representing New York. So he threw out the first pitch. And of course in that game one, after Willie's game saving catch off of the bat Vic Wirtz it was Dusty Rhodes who had a three-run homer to win game one and he went on to win MVP of that 
54 series. Now, I'm thinking back then in 54, Willie Mays had won the MVP. He made that memorable catch in the World Series. The Giants won the World Series. People were so in love with Willie Mays that they were naming their kids after him. Now, we all know in the movie Major League, Willie hey. Mays Hayes, played by Wesley Snipes, is a fun character. But we all know that he can run like Mays, but he hits like you know what. Well, there was a guy named after Willie Mays who played in Major League Baseball, and he could hit like Mays. This man had all the talent in the world. He could sure hit like Mays, but it, it was a temporary tragic story, which now has turned into a great redemption story and a successful one. I'm talking about a man named Willie Mays Akins. Willie Mays Akins, as you can see, that's how he signs his name on his card. And on the back of this 85 Tops card, you see there that he was named by the living physician after Willie Mays. And when was he born? October 14th, 1954. So his birthday was this Monday. So happy birthday, Willie Akins. And in 1954, we know what was happening and why the physician decided to name Willie, Willie Mays Akins. This is also stated in his 1981 Tops card. On the back, it says the same thing that the delivering physician named him after Willie Mays. Let's talk about Willie and his unbelievable life story. He was born in South Carolina, grew up very poor. He said he, you could see the dirt underneath his house through the floorboards. He didn't have running water, he had to get it from a well, and he didn't have a bathroom, he had an outhouse. So he grew up very poor, but he sure could play baseball. He played it so well that he was drafted number two in the draft. Came up with the Angels, but shortly after that, he was traded to the Kansas City Royals. And in 1980, he got to show what he was all about. 1980 World Series against the Philadelphia Phillies, he became the first ball player to hit two home runs in a game twice in the World Series. The first time he did it was on October 14th on his birthday in game one of the World Series. He took Bob Walk deep twice in Philadelphia. The next time he did it was in game four. And look at him pimping that home run. Man, he had swag, he could back it up, he had the power, the fans loved him, and he had it all. But Willie also had a problem with drugs. And in the off season of 1983, he along with three other teammates were jailed for almost 90 days for drug use. He was then picked up by the Toronto Blue Jays in the 1984 season. He had a great season, but he started to fade because of his drug use that had taken over his life. In 1985, he was out of baseball. In 1986, he attempted a comeback, but he went down to play in the Mexican League. There, he had a season for the ages. He batted 454 for the season, the highest ever and hit 46 home runs. He was hoping to get back to the major leagues, but the only league that was interested in him was NPB in Japan. And because of his record, he wasn't able to get a visa to go play in Japan. No major league team came calling, so he stayed in the Mexican league and he became a legend there. By 1993, he was out of baseball. But by then he had also become a full-blown drug addict. He was also selling cocaine. And in the winter of 93, he sold crack cocaine to an undercover cop a few times and that got him a 20-year prison sentence. He served almost 15 years in prison and he was released in 2008. In prison, Willie Akins dedicated his life to God and he vowed that when he was released that he would try to get back in baseball and help young ball players avoid the traps that he fell into. And he did just that. He became a coach in the Kansas City Royals farm system and since then, He's talked to numerous ball players about the temptations and struggles that they would face as professional ball players. He has written a book about his life story called Safe at Home. And there's also a movie that has been made about him called The Royal. So Mr. Willie Mays Akins, happy 70th birthday. And that's the story of Willie Mays Akins, named after the great Willie Mays. Now before I go, I wanna tell you a quick story about the day after the hurricane. Uh, my family and I, we got up and we didn't have any power, no internet. Uh, we didn't prep too well. We didn't have like propane tanks or anything to cook food. So we left to see if there was anything open where we could get a hot meal. And sure enough, there was one place open. It was a public supermarket. 
and we went in they had rotisserie chicken which was great so there was a little bit of normalcy there uh, in the dining room we were eating chicken and, and just having a, a good time thanking god that we were, we were safe and next to us there was an older lady that uh i guess she was watching us and she just felt like she wanted to you know come over and talk to us and she was a a great person uh she encouraged us she prayed with us and what's beautiful is she was celebrating her birthday she was turning 77 years old now her birthday was october 14th the same as willie mays akins she was turning 77. now while we were hanging out and having a good time and celebrating her birthday i got a phone call and it was someone that i loved dearly a tree had fallen on their house so i had to leave and go help but this lady her name is sandra wanted to come along you know she said i want to help them and encourage them and tell them everything's going to be okay so i said fine <laughs> she <laughs> came along and she followed us and we got to this person's house and there was a tree on their house and we said hey we're going to get this off and thankfully the tree didn't penetrate through the roof it was just sitting on top of it so that was a blessing also and we were able to cut down limbs but there was 77 year old miss sandra uh, helping us cut limbs and and try to get that tree off this person's house and then we took it all to the side of the street so the city could pick it up but that's just a great story about uh you know there's you know we have so many negative news these days so much so much terrible stuff in the world but uh in these moments you see people that are loving and caring and that's the majority of people they want to help others especially during these tough times so miss sandra was like an, a guardian angel she was just a, a blessing she um yeah, she just really lit up our day. She encouraged this person and told them that it was going to be okay. She prayed with them and then she was gone, you know. But what I do know about Miss Sandra is uh, she told us that she goes to Cowboy Up Church, which I got a kick out of because, um, you know, I'm thinking 20 years ago, the Red Sox won the World Series in 2004. And their saying back then was Cowboy Up. And we know that. They, took, they rode that all the way to a World Series win 20 years ago. So I just thought it was great that this lady went to a church called Cowboy Up. So <laughs> that's just uh, something I wanted to leave you with. And uh, hopefully you bring a smile to your face. And that's all I got for you guys. It's good to be back on. Uh, I'm looking forward to making more videos and getting back in touch with a bunch of you guys. So thanks for tuning in. And this is Hugo with Signs of the Past Signs saying take care. Forgot how to... Work this thing. Ah, thank you.